As most of you already know, I usually focus on crypto market structure, narratives, and how capital flows through different sectors of this space. But over the past few weeks, I've been getting more and more messages asking me to cover something a bit deeper, something that goes beyond charts and short-term price action. You asked for a proper breakdown of Bitenzor. I've recorded a few videos about this project already, but this one will give you all the details you need about it. This is not a surface level explanation or a quick bullish take, but a real look at why long term investors are even paying attention to a project that at first glance looks complex, technical and honestly intimidating for most people. So in this video, I want to walk you through the actual investment case for Bitenzor based on serious research. I'll explain what problem it's trying to solve, how its system really works, why its incentive design matters and where the long-term value of the network could realistically come from. And by the end of this video, you'll have a much clearer picture of whether Bitenzor is just another AI narrative or something structurally different. If you appreciate content that goes deeper, make sure to subscribe. We're getting close to the next milestone of 10k subscribers and there's a lot more coming. All right, now let's get into it. To understand why Bitenzor exists at all, we first need to take a step back and look at the current state of artificial intelligence. Right now, AI development is almost entirely centralized. A handful of large corporations control the models, the data, the infrastructure, and ultimately the value created by these systems. If you contribute data, research, or compute, you don't own the outcome. You're just another input into a closed system that extracts value upward. Bitenzor starts from a completely different assumption. Instead of treating intelligence as something that could be locked behind corporate walls, it treats intelligence as a market, an open permissionless system where anyone can contribute machine learning work, and where the network itself decides what is valuable through competition. That shift alone is what makes Bitenzor interesting. It's not trying to build the best AI model in the world. It's trying to build the best environment for intelligence to evolve. Essentially, Bitenzor is a decentralized network where participants compete to produce useful machine learning outputs. These outputs are evaluated by other participants and rewards are distributed based on performance rather than promises or reputation. This is where the incentive design really matters. Instead of rewarding raw compute or simple participation, Bitenzo rewards quality. If your model produces better results than others, the network recognizes that and allocates more rewards to you. If it doesn't, you earn less. Over time, this creates constant pressure toward improvement. Bad models don't survive. Good models get more attention and more rewards. And importantly, this process happens without a central authority deciding who wins. Now, one of the most misunderstood parts of Bitenzor, and also one of the most important for investors to understand, is the concept of subnets. Bitenzor is not a single monolithic AI system. It's more like a network of many smaller specialized AI markets that all exist under the same umbrella. Each subnet focuses on a specific task or problem. One subnet might focus on text generation, another on image models, another on forecasting, another on optimization or data labeling. Each subnet has its own incentive structure, its own participants, and its own competitive dynamics. This design choice is extremely important because it allows intelligence to specialize naturally instead of forcing one model to do everything. Same subnets will become highly valuable, others will fail completely. And that's not a bug, that's the entire point. Bitenzor is designed to let markets decide which forms of intelligence matter, instead of guessing ahead of time. From an investment perspective, this subnet architecture introduces something that most crypto projects don't have, internal economic selection. Capital in the form of token emissions flow toward subnets that produce value. Subnets that fail to attract usage or deliver results naturally receive fewer rewards over time. That means the network is constantly reallocating resources toward what works. This is much closer to how real economies function than how most blockchain networks operate. Now let's talk about the Tau token because this is where the investment thesis really comes together. Tau is of course a utility token used for fees. However, 
It's also the mechanism through which the network measures and rewards intelligence. New Tao is emitted and distributed based on how valuable different contributions are to the system. In other words, Tao represents a claim on the productive output of the network. And this is where BitTensor starts to look less like a typical crypto project and more like an emerging economic system. If decentralized AI becomes useful at scale, and if real demand for open intelligence market develops, then Tau becomes the asset that captured that value. Importantly, Tau has a fixed supply, which means there is no infinite dilution. Any increase in value has to come from increased usefulness and demand for the network itself. That alone separates it from a large number of AI team tokens that rely purely on narrative. When it comes to valuation, the research behind Bitenzor does not treat Tau like a meme coin, and it doesn't even treat it like a standard layer 1 blockchain. Instead, the valuation framework is built around the idea that BitTensor could become infrastructure for a new category of economic activity, decentralized intelligence. The real question is how much economic value flows through intelligence markets over time, and how much of that value accrues to the network. If AI continues to expand into every industry and if centralized models remain closed and extractive, then the demand for open alternatives naturally increases. That doesn't mean BitTensor automatically wins, but it does mean the addressable market is massive. Now, none of this comes without serious risks, and it's important to be honest about it. BitTensor is complex. The learning curve is steep. Many subnets will fail. Some incentive mechanisms may need refinement over time. Coordination in decentralized systems is never easy, especially when you're dealing with something as technical as machine learning. There's also competition from centralized players with far more capital and resources. And the regulation around AI is still evolving, which adds another layer of uncertainty. This is not a low-risk investment. It's not something you buy without understanding what you're holding. But complexity cuts both ways. The same complexity that scares most people away is also what keeps the opportunity asymmetric for those who take the time to understand it. What stands out to me personally, and this is just my opinion, is that BitTensor doesn't rely on belief. It relies on incentives. Participants don't contribute because they like the idea. They contribute because the system rewards them for producing real value. That's the same fundamental dynamic that made Bitcoin resilient and Ethereum successful. Incentives first, adoption follows. If decentralized AI becomes a real category, Bitensor is already structured to benefit from it. So when I step back and look at the bigger picture, I don't see Bitensor as a short-term trade or a simple AI narrative. I see it as a long-term infrastructure bet on a very specific vision of how intelligence should be created and distributed. This is why I still hold Tao in my portfolio. It may succeed, it may fail, but if it succeeds, the upside is not linear because the value isn't tied to one product. It's tied to an entire ecosystem of evolving intelligence markets. And that's what makes it worth studying, even if you ultimately decide it's not for you. All right, let's wrap this up. If you found this video useful, hit the like button because it really helps the channel. Let me know in the comments what you think about decentralized AI and whether you believe open intelligence networks can realistically compete with centralized models.